All right, we were talking about um, the father-son relationship and how that is meant to affect us. And, and uh, as I was meditating on that, uh, that point, and I didn't even write down the scripture, but I, it was on the way here, <clears throat> it was when the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. They, you know, they're, I'm sure they're good Jews. They go to the temple on a regular basis and all this kind of stuff. So they knew and heard many, 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 many prayers. Um, I was telling somebody, someone said to me, Randy, I, I heard that you are a Jew, which Nussbaum is German Jew. I heard you're a Jew, you know, did you live like a Jew growing up? And I said, so, are, and then are you a Jew? And I said, well, Jewish. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> anyway. They, you know, they heard lots of prayers and things. And I know people who can, who can pray really well. I, I have, over my years, I've heard people that were just incredible prayers. In fact, um, at a particular church that I went to, uh, which I was the assistant pastor with J.W., and he was the pastor, he always called on this guy to pray because it was just like, it was just so beautiful. Um, I've heard other people pray, and they're sincere. I've heard beautiful. I've heard all kind of ones. But I think that Jesus' prayer, that Jesus' prayer probably was the most real prayer because he was really talking to his father Amen. you know that it wasn't a religious prayer mm -hmm. and I think that uh, that uh, I learned in Jamaica with poor Jamaicans who you know didn't have much and, and they some of them particularly one lady would pray and man she knew the Lord um, so i I think that maybe what precipitated the disciples saying, you know, Lord, you know, after he prayed, Lord, teach us. Teach us. And, um, and of course, that's when Jesus said, when you pray, pray our Father. Our Father. And so... As I was thinking about it in the car, and I didn't have a chance to really do much with it, but I just I started thinking about that reality that, that Jesus said that, and it just came to my mind before I could even list anything that there are a whole lot of reasons why Jesus would say, okay, here's, here's how you pray, our Father. Because if you get that wrong, it almost doesn't matter what else you say because you're, you're not going to the... Uh, going about it the correct way. Uh, and here's what I mean by that. Um, most people that pray that I'm aware of when I hear them pray are praying to Jesus. And yet if you go through the New Testament, you'll find that, I mean, I'm going to just go with the vast majority without saying every prayer. The vast majority of prayers are to the Father. through Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And um, uh, so I was thinking about some of those things, uh, adding those into the list that was going on in my head as I was thinking there's, there's so many reasons why Jesus would say pray our Father. And of course the first one is our. He is, he is not just to be understood as a religious God. And that blows people away. He's supposed to be our father. <laughs> a religious God. 
and it be leading toward religion instead of heart issues and relationship. And, and therefore, there's not a lot of father in it. There's not even missing the fact that the father should be addressed. And Jesus said, when you pray, go to the Father. Because he's not widely known as our Father. He is more widely known as a religious God. Um, and, and how do we relate to him then if he's just a religious God? We miss a whole bunch. I did get to jot a few things down. I put, Jesus holds that all flows from the head. Jesus isn't going to say, pray to me. There's someone above me. It all flows down from the head. I mean, that's innate in him. And the way that he, he flows and the way the Holy Spirit flows in that relationship of the Trinity. Um, and... And that's not just a thing of prayer. It's not just a thing of prayer. It's a thing of God's order to reach us the best way. Okay, One way could be Jesus says, well, I'm just going to be, and this is the way the hippies a lot of times uh, view Jesus as Jesus is my friend. I'm going to sit down as your friend, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you. Okay, well, that's fine, but you're not going to get very far with that. The disciples didn't when Jesus walked with them, and, you know. Um, but but if the fa uh, the Father is here, and then all that's Him, He says, "I'm one with the Father," and flows down into Him, and then the Holy Spirit, and then it flows into us. Then it's all that is there can literally flow into us through that order. It's the best way. <laughs> it's the best way for us, you know. And <clears throat> but there there again. If we miss that order, we're working outside of it, and then we're, we're not really, we could say our God instead of our Father then, or just help me, you're my God, instead of you're my Father and you're in the order of this, you know. I mean, even Jesus says, you know, when, at the end, uh, the kingdom will be, you know, given to me, and then I will deliver up the kingdom unto my Father, and God shall be all and in all. Now, just think about the process of what that's saying there. It doesn't say the Father will be all. It says, God, I'll deliver it up to my Father and God. And that order will prevail. That will be the government. <clears throat> um, and then, of course, he said, uh, the scriptures say a lot about when you pray, pray in Jesus' name. Um, so, so what do we do? Well, the, mo the easiest thing we do is we just always say, in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, without having any real idea about that, we, we just quote that because we make it a religious mantra the other part, the other way we approach that is that we attack that in a sense of what does it mean in Jesus' name, you know? And so we're gonna we're gonna really study this thing out. Um, but to me, Jesus, and and you get that in Philippians, we quoted it last class, uh, that he made himself of no reputation, that he didn't think it was a thing to be equal with God. He humbled himself and became as a man. He, that spirit was in him. He didn't, um, um, uh, he didn't become something different other than physically. He still has that nature. And that nature is that you don't put yourself first. He declares the Father. The Father declares the Son. The Holy Spirit declares the Son. The, you know, that flow of the, the Godhead and that self-giving and that, that uh, always deferring, always um, 
always taken the lower seat. I mean, I think that some of us might be proud that we, uh, we can remember a time we took the lower seat. <laughs> yeah, well, but I mean, I can, you know, I can see that. Well, I, you know, along with that, this kind of a, out of what we're talking about here, but uh, I was thinking about the uh, judgment day, judgment day, you know, and <clears throat> that um, some people are looking forward to judgment day so that, that they can have all the people that did them wrong or that were wrong or that were da 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 da. And it can be a day of, for them to say, I told you so, I told you so. See, I, told, I kept my mouth shut, I was humble. But now, judgment day is my opportunity to tell you all I told you so. And yeah, I, I appreciate some of you shaking your head because that is deeply, deeply sad and off and wrong. And it also declares something about the person because it means that they never, they never did humble them. They might have held their tongue, but they didn't hold their tongue in their brain that talks. You know, there's the talking that goes on here, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, and so, uh, I, you know, I just, I just saw that, that there are, this is actually, I know that it's true. There are some people that that's what they think the judgment day is going to be about. And if they do that, God's going to judge them <laughs> on a completely different basis than they thought what judgment day was going to be. He's going to say, what, where is my son? And, the, and therefore, with these actions, where was my son at any point in all of that? You're still, you know, and uh, I, really, as I meditated on it, anybody remember a book I wrote called Troubles and Trials, uh, Stumbling Blocks or Stepping Stones? <clears throat> I was pretty young when I wrote that book. It's one of my earlier books. But what I saw was that the troubles and trials of this life can be either stumbling blocks or stepping stones. And if they become stepping stones to gaining the nature of Christ, then they're not stumbling blocks they're only jesus is only a stumbling block to people who don't believe in him or that resist him right so they are our workers as paul says in second corinthians um what three <clears throat> four and um but see, remember this up here, mind of Christ or mental theology? We can have these theologies and think that it's all correct, but our mind, our, our mind has, it'll take things and it will never let go of this or that. And it's stupid to preach, let go. I mean, I don't, I, you understand what I mean. I'm not, I'm not, I've, I've preached it, but with this emphasis, just like you, you emphasize. Unless it's the mind of Christ, we're going to hold on. See? And if it's the Son formed in us, then we'll relate to the Father correctly. Yes. I mean, that's the, that's the key. That's the kicker. Just being born again doesn't assure that, does it? Because we all got junk that still goes and still runs and still this and that. And, and this is, now this is just a little bit of me and where I'm at in the Lord. If we are n not as close to the Lord as we think we are, those things, those things, we're numb to them. Yes. We don't, we don't know how far away we are. We don't know we're a prodigal son. We think that we're taking the father's goods and, you know, having a little fun with them too. But, you know, we don't, we don't realize what is allowable um, of spite and anger and all the things that, that go along in us because simply because it's not the sun. But we think our mental theology is that we're okay. Okay, now here's the deal. Let me say this. It's not about being okay. In other words, we can say, but I think I'm okay. It's not about being okay. It's about Christ being formed in us. 
the sun being formed in us. And if that sun is in us, then our, 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 our fathers, which I'm not talking about the Catholic prayer, but our times when we say our father, it'll be all of our father. And that's why the father spoke to the elder son and said, you know, your brother. It is right, it is fitting that your brother, you know, we, we rejoice together because he was lost and you need to feel this way, but you don't feel this way. You feel anger. You feel, you know, all, I don't even know what all, you know, I really don't. I mean, I, I got my own things, but I don't usually go where most people go. You feel all this stuff. This isn't right, unfair, and you know, well, then, then God's unfair, then the Father's unfair, then, you know, and then, then heaven's unfair, and then, well, where, then where can you go that you can find people like you? Well, hell. <laughs> no, I meant, well, hell, I don't know. Not really. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I've been wanting to say that for years. <clears throat> All right, and then um, when you pray in Jesus' name, you're acknowledging the one that you're one with. But you won't acknowledge that if you're not one. You'll only acknowledge that truthfully because the, it's not just saying in Jesus' name. It is saying, I'm incorporated into this Jesus. I am thinking about the one that I'm joined with. You understand? I mean, it's a, it's, I, I'm not asking this on my merits. I'm not coming to you based on what I think I deserve or don't deserve because I'd be in a lot of trouble, you know. <laughs> I'm coming in an, another. I'm coming in another. And I'm of this other. And I have his name and I can use his name not because I'm worthy, but because he is. And it's an acknowledgement of something, you know, it, that should be acknowledged. That's the best way to say that, that maybe we, we haven't been. Um, and then, I, of course, as I mentioned, I wrote the father-son relationship is what we entered into, so that's why... You know, that's why it's our Father. So we didn't just enter into heaven, or we didn't just enter into Christianity, or we didn't just enter into salvation, or we didn't. We entered into a relationship that was eternal from before the foundation of the world. Okay, well, that's a mind blower. Okay, so how are we little finite creatures going to enter into that that has been from before the foundation of the world? Only through Christ. Only as his heart is my heart. And his mind is my mind. And that takes a while to begin to see the heart of the Father through the Son's eyes. And so we say, we say, I, Father, I want to know you. And I, I even do a song that, that says that. But, <laughs> but you know that song? The, the song that I do and that, that is... Uh, talks about rest and it says I, I just want to go up into the mountain and I just want to go by the still river and I just want to rest with you Jesus and that's what it's it's a very nice easy going song and then all of a sudden it rises and says take me to the father I'm and it's a, a, someone who's not at rest they are but they have rested in Christ at that place that's that place of rest where they where they were seeking and didn't realize once Christ got in them and was really there, it would be, oh, my God, take me to the Father. And then the words just keeping that song, kept, take me to the Father. You know, because that's the automatic of if you're really going to rest in Christ, you're going to end up with the Father. If the bride is, is going to rest in Christ, she's eventually going to have her emphasis, the Father. Does that make sense? Because a husband and wife would honor his father. Isn't it funny? Because you're going, Jesus, you're everything. And Jesus says, well, I've got something that's everything to me. You know, and it draws your heart out. See, these are not head things. 
You can't, you can dig around all day to try to put stuff in your head and you'll never get this kind of stuff. Let me make sure I got, all right. Um, and then I put, we don't pray to Jesus because he's our life. That'd be like praying to ourself. <laughs> I mean, think about it, you know. He is our life. We're praying to the Father through the Son. And the Father is acknowledging us because it's the, the Son. And that's a remember what I said up here? That's a, there's a whole lot of reasons Jesus said, when you pray, pray our Father. But all of these things, even though I made a little list, can't be listed. It, it has to be relational. It has to be the process. I mean, a, a Christian, you know, a Christian has to gather to the church, and the church has to has to say we we want to see Jesus in a way that we'll function as a as the bride of Christ. And so then they begin to do that, and then then that spirit begins to be there, and then it seems like you know the bride's focus is only on Jesus, and then Jesus begins to put into her his view of the Father, and then she begins to join with him, and you know. Go after his heart to please him. It's, it's a beautiful order, but there's nobody that can truly communicate these things. There has to be that place in our heart that we begin to make room for him. We begin to say, this is bigger than me. This is more glorious than anything that I could ever want. I, I'm asking you, Father, to uh, release the Holy Spirit to his most precious ministry, to reveal the Son in me. How that looks, I don't care, but I'll know it when my spirit starts crying, Abba, Father, that the Son is truly there because that's where he goes. See? Does that make sense? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time and, and, and hearts that so long after you and a group of people that, Lord, we, we don't care about anything else. We, we're not trying to build something in the earth. We're trying to be built into a habitation for you. And except you build that house, we labor in vain. So that's why we, we humble, we cry, we, we reach out, we long after you. All those things hit us at different times. And we want to be more than just secular Christians on this earth. We want to experience something of eternity so that when we step into eternity, it won't be all unfamiliar, and, but it'll be exactly what we've been experiencing now just a step in there, just a step away. We thank you. We thank you, Father. Allow the Holy Spirit to lift up Christ. We don't even have to pray. Allow us to know you, Father. We pray, allow the Holy Spirit to lift up Christ and reveal him in us, and we shall know you. That will come in its time. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, just real quick, if y'all don't mind.